This is the K1 Max, Creality's largest Core XY 3D printer release to date. While I had high hopes for this machine, it hasn't exactly been a smooth experience. So far, we upgraded the hot end to the Micro Swiss Flowtech and added stiff springs to the bed, which majorly increased the printer's overall reliability. But there's always room for additional improvements. Upon release, Creality made a few revisions to their faulty extruder, and while the final version is better, it still feels like a poor attempt at a Bontech LGX. There's no way to adjust tension, and when my buddy Zombie Hedgehog did some investigating into the internals, he found that there was binding caused due to the drive gears being improperly supported. I've been a fan of Devil Design's work since I first discovered their Devil Burner toolhead that I'm running in my K1 Max. Nine months ago, they teased a drop-in extruder upgrade for the K1 line of printers called Cyclops that reminded me of the Orbiter extruder, which is still one of my all-time favorites. I've been in contact with the creator of the project, and once the finished product was ready to be shipped, they were awesome enough to provide us with one to play around with. So in today's video, we'll be diving into Cyclops. We'll go over what it is, what assembly and install is like, and I'll share my thoughts based on my experience with it so far. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Today's video is brought to you by FlexiSpot. Are you tired of sitting all day and feeling that back and neck pain creep up? Meet the FlexiSpot E7 Plus Standing Desk, the perfect solution to keep you comfortable, productive, and moving. I've been using their E7 Pro for a while now and have been extremely happy with it. The new studio has more space, so I went with a larger tabletop and different surface to match the workbenches I film on. The E7 Plus isn't just any desk. It's built with a dual motor system for smooth, powerful adjustments, holding up to 540 pounds of static load. Switch seamlessly between sitting and standing with just the touch of a button, helping you stay energized and focused throughout the day. With four programmable presets and plenty of customization options, this desk adapts perfectly to any work environment. Upgrade your workspace today with the FlexiSpot E7 Plus. Starting with the what. As mentioned, the Cyclops was designed as a drop-in replacement for the K1 printers. The GitHub page mentions that it draws from the proven technology of the Orbiter 2, which is fairly obvious in its design and the planetary gears that it uses. It uses an LDO motor, and the specs on it state accelerations up to 3K, with retraction speeds as high as 120 millimeters per second. The larger drive wheels give it a firm grip on the filament, and you can adjust the tension of the extruder arm, making it a much better option for anyone wanting to print with filaments such as TPU. This extruder is sold as a kit that includes everything you need minus the printed housing, some grease for the gears, and a bit of PTFE tube. In the GitHub is a beautiful step-by-step -step guide covering the entire assembly process as well as changes that need to be made to Clipper. The motor included in this kit is the LDO 36 STH20 1004 AHG, which is a 10 tooth 1.8 degree NEMA 14. You also get an orbiter cammed shaft, dual drive gear set, Delrin gears, and all the bearings and hardware needed for assembly. For printing, there are only two parts. This is the main housing and the tension arm. The recommendation for these parts is to print them out of either ABS, ASA, nylon, or polycarbonate. For print settings, a layer height of 0.1 or 0.2 is needed, at least four walls and both top and bottom layers, and 25% infill. I went with ABS for mine and I'm pretty sure I just stuck with my standard Voron profile. I used Polymaker's Galaxy Grey ABS to match my toolhead and Black ABS to give some accent to the logo. There are two versions of the main body STL, one being pre-supported and one requiring you to add your own supports. I tested out both and ended up having better luck with removing the supports when I added them myself. For tools, you'll need a soldering iron for the heat inserts, a set of Allen keys, and a flathead screwdriver. The first step is to install the needed heat inserts. There are a total of four, with two on the left and two on the right side of the extruder. I used my stealth press for this with CNC Kitchen's heat insert tool, which is really nice, but even a handheld soldering iron with a standard tip will suffice. 
The key thing is to insert them straight and I highly recommend using a hard surface or flat tool to ensure they are pressed flat with the surface. Next is to install the MR128 bearing into the front of the extruder. I recommend aligning it so that it's slightly pressed in and then using your tabletop to press it the rest of the way in. This will make sure that it's properly aligned. To build the drive shaft, slide the MF148 flanged bearing onto the shaft as well as the filament drive gear. Pay attention to the orientation of the bearing. You want the flange side to be facing inward. For the gear, it needs to be the one that has a set screw on it. I didn't end up adding it until later, but it's highly recommended to put a bit of Loctite on that screw. I've experienced these coming loose over time, so even just a medium Loctite can really help. While you don't want to fully tighten the set screw, it's helpful to align it on the flat side of the drive shaft and partially tighten it. By doing this, it will still be able to slide up and down, but it won't be able to rotate off of the flat portion. After assembling, push the drive shaft into the main body of the extruder. To prevent the front bearing from wanting to fall out, place the housing on its face and push in from top down. This makes sure that the shaft and bearing are perfectly aligned with the front of the housing. Then install the three small MR85 bearings into the Delrin gears and place them on the pegs on the backside of the CNC drive shaft. Mind the orientation here, you want the bearing side to be going in first. This prevents them from being able to be pushed out or fall out of those Delrin gears. Before placing the gear housing over the gears, you'll want to add grease to it all. For this, I just used some Superlube multi-purpose grease that I had previously installed into a syringe. Generally, I prefer to go with a little more versus a little less, but you really want to make sure the gears have a nice amount applied around them. Then place the gear housing over the gears. It may require a bit of wiggling back and forth to get all of those gears properly aligned. You should be able to twist the housing and have all of the gears spin with it. When you align the housing with the printed main body, you'll feel it sort of just slot into place. Next, install the motor into the rear assembly. The guide's image looks like the motor wire orientation should be upwards, so that's what I first went with, but later discovered that downward is cleaner for the wire path. Secure the motor to the extruder using the included M3 by 30 and M3 by 16 millimeter socket head screws. Since the housing is a printed part, there's not an issue with snugging it up, but you want to make sure you are just hand tightening it to avoid accidentally cracking that printed body. The last part of the main assembly is the tension arm. Take the other gear and insert the bushing into it. The guide says that it's a palm bushing, but mine appeared to be made of brass. There was also no set screw, so I believe the guide just needs to be updated for the release version kits. Mind the orientation of the gear as you place it into the tension arm, then push the included pin through the printed part and gear to secure it in place. There's a stainless steel filament guide tube that needs to be threaded into the bottom of the extruder's main body. You can start this by hand, but you will need a flathead to get it fully installed. The guide calls for a half millimeter gap being wanted between the guide and the drive gear. To do this, thread in that guide until it pushes all the way into the gear, then back off around a half turn. Now we can align our drive gears. Cut a piece of filament and feed it from the top of the extruder and out the bottom. Wiggle it back and forth and inspect it to make sure that the filament is centered on the gear's teeth then tighten. Remember again to use some Loctite to hopefully save yourself from some future frustrations. Then take your assembled tensioner arm, place it into the extruder, and secure it in place with the final pin from the kit. Install the tensioner spring screw through the arm and into the main body. With the screw and spring included in my kit, it only needed maybe four or five turns to have a pretty strong grip on the filament. To install the Cyclops into your K1, start by taking off the front tool head cover. This is only held in place with two screws, one on each side. Then remove the stock extruder. This has two screws on the right side and one on the left. Creality uses a very odd stacked tool head board, so to remove the existing motor connector and install the new one, I recommend removing the three screws that hold that tool head board in place. You can access these screws from the front of the tool head and doing this just gives you much more clearance to reach in and pull out the old motor cable. Before installing the new extruder, there's a tab that needs to be removed on the back right side of the carriage. For this, I just used my flush cutters to trim the plastic and took a small hand file to clean it up. 
The process is fairly simple and it really only took me a minute or two to make that small modification. You also need a PTFE tube that will go into the bottom of the extruder and feed into the hot end. The recommended distance for this is between roughly 24 and 25 millimeters long. Steve over at Steve Builds made an awesome little PTFE cutting jig that I've been using a lot lately and I'll have it linked in the description. For whatever reasoning, I had a little difficulty aligning the PTFE tube with the opening it needed to go into when sliding the extruder back into the tool head. I found that if you have the back of the printer facing you, you can actually see that PTFE tube and use your finger or something like a screwdriver to help guide it into place. Secure the new extruder in using the same screws as the stock one, connect the motor from it to the tool head board, and reinstall the mainboard screws along with the cover. As far as hardware goes, it is now fully installed and all that's left is to make some tweaks in Clipper. Open your printer.cfg file in the web interface and locate the extruder header. Here we need to swap out the rotation distance to 4.637. The guide calls for adding an exclamation point to the direction pin, which inverts the direction, but in my case, this wasn't needed. Then under the TMC2209 extruder header, we'll raise the run current from 0.55 to 0.7. Lastly, a change needs to be made to the PR Touch V2 section. This will differ depending on whether you have a K1 or K1 Max, but you'll updating the clear nozzle start Y to 219 for the regular K1 and 300 for the K1 Max. All that's left is to save and restart your firmware. You can play around with the extruder specific accelerations, but the only change I've made so far is setting the retraction length to 0.4 of a millimeter and doubling the retraction and de-retraction speed to 80 millimeters per second. I started out with running a multi-part print in Creality's high-speed PLA. I really just wanted to verify the extruder was working correctly and that my initial settings seemed to at least be close to correct. Well, the good news is I had no issues. There was some stringing that I'll need to tune, but the extrusion itself was very consistent. Next, I grabbed some TPU. This is a pretty old 95A that I've had laying around for a couple of years. I started out with drying it overnight and then printed out a foot for the SV08. I started this with using the Creality generic TPU profile. While the extruder handled it well and the part turned out clean, it was a much slower print than I expected. This was largely due to the max flow rate set for TPU. It was capped at 3.2 cubic millimeters per second. I upped this to 12 cubic millimeters per second and dropped the minimum layer time for cooling. And while the extruder had no issues with this, cooling clearly didn't have enough time here. I was able to counter this by printing two of them at the same time to give each layer just a little more time to cool. Based on my initial prints, I'm really liking Cyclops much more than the stock Creality extruder. Performance of it should be very comparable to the Orbiter 2, which as I mentioned earlier is one of my all-time favorite extruders and one I have a lot of experience with. If you've been having extruder issues with your K1, you've struggled to print with TPU, or you're just looking for a higher quality option for your K1, I definitely recommend taking a look at Cyclops. And that has been the Cyclops extruder. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that I was able to answer the majority of the questions that you might have had about this extruder. If you do have any additional ones, let me know in the comments down below. And as always, if I don't know the answer to your question, I have no problem trying to reach out to the creator of this project to get those answers for you. And for anybody interested in finding out more, I'll have links in the description over to the GitHub, as well as the printables page where you can find out more about the specifics as well as look into the kit providers. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video just about every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. If you want to support the channel further, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.